Okay, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about parametric equations, um, but I'm really going to try to show you how to do something different on your Inspire that you maybe haven't done until this point. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a notes page, which is something I've definitely never told you to do, but you've probably discovered, um, you know, in your pursuit of better grades in science, perhaps. So what I'll do is I'll add a notes page, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to define my parametric equations in this notes page. So it's a little weird. So I'm going to... Uh, kind of label things, but on the handheld I probably wouldn't do that because it's a pain in the neck. Um, so in a notes page, you have different options. So when you press menu, you'll see uh, all kinds of different things. What we really want to do is we want to insert uh, a math box so that we can do some math. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to define my first set of parametric equations. So object one moves with parametric equations, or according to parametric equations. Um, and I do uh, 1 plus uh, 8 over 8t. And when I press uh, enter, it automatically says done. And now if I press the var key, uh, that's defined as a variable. So this is a way that you can define variables. You can actually just add and subtract. You can do whatever kinds of math you can do on a calculator page on uh, the notes page using these math boxes. When you press enter, it also creates a new math box for you. So let's uh, define y1. And then we'll have x1, y1 all set up. So this will be uh, 2 plus, and then uh, 12 over eight and t. Okay, so I get that. So that's object one. Uh, both of those are now stored as variables. And what I'll do now is I'm deleting that math box and I'm gonna say object two. And uh, if you look, when you press menu and go to insert, it gives you a shortcut. So for me, it says uh, command plus M. I'm pretty sure on the handheld it's control M, um, but that can speed things up for you. So now I'm gonna do X two of T and set it equal to, uh, what, let's go with, I'm going to have 11, and then minus 10 over 14 t, and y2 of t, I'm going to set equal to, so I'm just defining some functions here, uh, 2 plus 10 over 14 t. Okay, so now I have object 1, object 2, if I press var, I can see those, so if I entered a uh, calculator page here, uh, all those variables would be available as long as I stay in problem one. So if I move to problem two, then this stuff is all going to be kind of reset so that I could use it again. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is a, a really common thing is to find uh, the times at which uh, the paths of these objects intersect. So I'm going to say intersection times. And I'll do this in a way that uh, someone who's using a non-cast could do it. So I'm going to press menu. Uh, well, I need a math box. so. Control M, and then uh, go to calculations. And in calculations, you get everything that's available in the um, calculator page. So I want algebra, and I'm going to go down to solve system of linear equations. So this is so that people with non-cast can do it too. Uh, two equations. I'm going to change this to T and V. So this is exactly what you would have done uh, on a calculator page. So x1 of T equals x2 of V, and y1 of T equals y2 of v. Okay, and I'm going to press uh, enter, and it gives me those times. So uh, what's happening is uh, object 1 gets to the point at t, so that's at 4, and object 2 gets there at v, which is uh, 42 over 5. So what you can do to make this a little prettier, if you uh, care about that kind of thing, is when you're inside the math box, if you go to uh, menu, and then math box options, there's some attributes, so you can have it uh, not show the input, so you might hide the input, in which case, uh, it'll always show up when you're in the math box, but when you arrow out of it, so it's a little less cluttered, which is kind of nice. Um, so anyway, it's giving me that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is something a little weird. Uh, I'm gonna copy this, well, I'm gonna try to copy this, which I might not be able to. Oh, that would be so unfortunate. All right, well, you should definitely copy this. I'm gonna try to copy this and hope for the best. Did not work. Okay, so I'm going to now try to find the uh, intersection point. So what I want to do there, I'm going to do something a little strange. So let me just first, uh, I'm going to insert a calculator page and show you something. So if I do, if I solve a system of linear equations, t and v, uh, so x1 of t equals x2 of v and y1 of t equals y2 of v, like that. 
Uh, if I do that, and I just put, uh, so it looks like you're putting a vector after it, but I'm just going to say 1. What this will do is it peels off that first answer. So I just get the 4. And then if I do 2, it just peels off the second answer. So I'm going to take advantage of that and try to use it. I'm hoping this works. Man, copy and paste would be awesome here, but it's not working. Uh, all right, yeah, I'm going to have to type it all. Lovely. All right, so new math box. And what I actually want to do is uh, I'm going to find the intersection point. So that's going to be x1 of, I want to somehow get that 4, right? So I just showed you on the calculator page, you can copy and paste this. Uh, what you do is you do your um, system, so algebra 7, this is awful if you can't copy and paste, uh, t and v. So it's x1 of t equals x2 of v and y1 of t equals y2 of v. And then I only want, so after it solves that, I want the first answer, right? Because I want to plug t, which is 4, into x1. And then I'm going to do comma, and then y1 of the same thing. So I'm going to have to uh, type this out again, I guess. Ugh, ugh, it's horrible. All right, so hopefully you're already done with that by copying and pasting. So it's kind of like revenge for all those times in class where I'm typing so fast and you're complaining about it. Although I seem to be complaining more than you do. All right. Whew. And then I got to get one from that. Okay. And when I press enter, it's going to say done and hopefully give me uh, the intersection point. So this is something where uh, after I've done that, so the key step here is I want to evaluate x1 and y1 at the first part of this ordered pair. So at four. Uh, so it gives me that. This one I would definitely want to format so that I'm not seeing, whoa, what are you? Uh, I want to format the math, so math box options. I really only want to see the output there um, and arrow out of there. And apparently uh, I chose only input. Good job. So I want to hide the input. And I get that. Um, and this is the same. So if I change this to a 3, it changes the intersection time, changes the intersection point, uh, which is really useful. And then the last thing that I would do is on this page, I would just define the distance formula because what's going to happen is every time you change x1, y1, x2, or y2, it's going to update your distance formula for you. And then that'll be available for you to use in the uh, graph page. So distance of t, and then you can just type it in. So square root of x2 of t minus x1 of t. And then, so this video runs a little long, but I think I'm imagining that you can think of ways to use this that aren't just for parametric equations. And it's kind of interesting, so it's kind of worth it, I think. So there's distance. So now what happens is if I put in a graph page, and go with distance as a function of x, every time I use on my notes page, every time I update uh, either of those sets of equations, it's going to update this. So if I find the minimum, so let me do that, of this function, like so. So that's the time, and then that's the uh, distance. So it's uh, 4.599. To just try to remember that. If I go up here and I change this to a 4, press enter, I could have changed all of them. Uh, it's already updated the minimum for you. All right, so this is definitely a file that you would want to create and then save. Um, but that's how you can use math boxes to uh, greatly simplify this process. Now, obviously, if you're in press the test mode, none of this will be available to you. Uh, but I still think it's really worth having and doing because uh, you learn a lot by doing it. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful and uh, good luck.